All right, good morning again, everybody. So I hope you are fine and dry na, um, uh, despite the, the storms that uh, came in uh, over the weekend. Uh, luckily, I think most of Laguna was spared, even though signal number, ano ba tayo, three or four? Uh, parang saglit lang yung, uh, yung bagyo, dumaan lang siya, thanks to Sierra Madre. So save, uh, hashtag, uh, save Sierra Madre. But anyway, so I hope you are good. If not, then hopefully things will get better and bugger recover now. So if you were badly affected by the typhoon and you need some time to catch up with ACADs, just let me know. Uh, we can give you uh, some leniency. Uh, okay, lalo na kung nahirapan kayo. And lucky for you guys, uh, the laboratory exercise was that was supposed to be submitted yesterday is postponed until next week. It's uh, a bit of uh, uh, parang blessing pero naka-disguise siya kasi pwede siyang maging curse. Parang blessing in disguise in reverse because uh, uh, we will have another set of exercises on Monday. So you will be dealing with uh, two exercises on Monday. The one is about the error interpolation which was already given uh, over the weekend last time. So hopefully you're, you started doing it. Uh, some of you already messaged me and asked for clarificatory things about it. So good for you guys. You already started it. If you haven't done so, please do start because uh, so Monday may dagdag tayo na exercise na gagawin. And the exercise for Monday will be whatever we'll finish in module number three. But I hope we'll be able to finish the entirety of module three because medyo isang linggo na tayong behind sa schedule. But I think we can catch up this week. Especially kung kakaunti lang yung daldal na gagawin ko and if I'll get uh, moving on with the module, all right? Okay, so module three is all about optimizing or um, actually optimizing the interpolation process with respect to some measures of error. So fake news na itong dates na yan. And it, tama pa pala, no? Kasi sabi ko two weeks yung module number three. But let's see if we can, uh, we can compress it into, uh, say, hanggang... Friday, you know, and you'll have laboratory exercise on October 3rd, right? And that would be probably the entirety of lab exert 2, right? Because kung, mapat, kung matatapos natin itong uh, bone coverage ng module number 3. Now, what are you uh, supposed to uh, uh, learn? Uh, to be able to calculate the Chebyshev and the uh, Lagendaire polynomials of certain degrees. This is very important because yung mga interpolatory um, abscissas na gagamitin natin ay mga and of course, and, uh, of uh, the Chebyshev polynomials Yung tunay na pronunciation niya, I think it's Chepichef. So, pero mahirap siyang bangitin maraming F. So, I'll just pronounce it uh, the westernized way, Chebyshev. And then discuss why and how the use of the roots of said polynomials give um, or gives the best, uh, sorry, parang mali yung grammar. Uh, discuss why and how the use, uh, in the use in subject, the use of the roots of said polynomial gives the best interpolating polynomials with respect to some norms. Kasi makikita natin na pag pinili natin ng maayos yung interpolatory abscissas, we can make the error much smaller than what uh, what we could get if we'll just be using random points. Okay? Nakikita natin yan later. And ito sana yung gusto ko nangyari dun sa laboratory exercise 1.2 na hindi natuloy. Yan tuloy, mas spoil na kayo dun sa last item ano, um, during this module. But the intention there is to show or to make you realize on your own while doing the exercise na uh, pwede pala mapababa pa yung error if we can choose the abscissas wisely. At yun nga yung gagamitan natin ng Chebyshev and Lagender polynomials. And then of course, as usual, um, we'll try or you should be able to uh, to use yung uh, interpolating polynomials na nanggagaling dito sa dalawang class of polynomials in solving scientific problems, okay? Uh, are you hearing me fine? Kasi parang nag-fail na yung aking uh, share screen. Hopefully, I'm here. Let me just uh, restart sharing my screen. Kasi parang na-delay na siya.
Yeah, thank you, Elgin. Uh, na delay lang yung share screen ko yata. Or uh, sa akin lang ba yun? Okay, there you go. Oh, sorry about that, Mitzi. Uh, kung medyo choppy, pakisabihan ako. Ito na naman yung internet woes ko. And that's uh, one reason why hindi ko kayang mag-zoom mag or mag-gmeet. Kasi pinaka-stable na sa akin yung MS Teams. Ano. Pero wala namang pasok ngayon yung pamangkin ko. So dapat wala akong kaagaw sa, sa bandwidth. But anyway, all right. Okay, so uh, let's first revisit the error term in interpolation. And this is where we left off from uh, module number two. Okay, so sabi natin kapag ka meron kang isang function f na gustong i-interpolate o gustong i-approximate using the interpolatory as uh, using an algebraic interpolating polynomial relative to the abscissas x1 until x sub n plus 1, ito yung error na nakukuha natin, right? So the error in doing so is uh, a factor of a function value of the n plus 1 derivative of f, right, over the interval a, b. Now, just to reiterate, si number C, itong uh, number na yan, si curly E o si C, right? The Greek letter is C. Si C ay isang number on the, inter uh, on the interpolatory interval, say, sabihin natin na A comma B. But uh, two things about the, about the number C. The number C depends on the value of X, okay? Kasi ito yung error sa pag interpolate ng, or pag approximate ng f of x using the interpolatory interval, ah, uh, sorry, the interpolatory polynomial p sub n. Okay? So kung gusto mong i-approximate ang value ni f at a particular number x inside the interpolatory interval, yung error dun sa approximation na yun ay equal dito. Alright? Nakadepende siya sa isang value ng n plus 1 derivative ni f. Pero value niya kanino? Value niya kay c. And the only thing we know about C, si C ay isang number sa interpolatory interval. There is no way we can find C. And C is dependent on X. Pag binago mo na yung X, kung saan ka nag-approximate. Nag, uh, nag so pag binago mo na tong X dyan sa uh, left-hand side, mababago na si C. So C, si C ay nakadepende from X value to X value. Halimbawa, nag interpolate ka sa interval 0, 1. Okay? Pagka Kinukuha mo yung approximation para kay f of 0 0.5, may mahanap ka na c para sa kanya. A number c between 0 and 1. Kapag ka ang in, uh, pagka ang approximate mo na ay si x equal 0 0.75, iba na naman yung c na makukuha mo. So si c rito ay isang number na hindi natin alam dun sa interpolatory interval at nagbabago siya. Depende kung anong x yung uh, kinukuhanan mo ng function value. Right? So that's why we cannot really unravel the, mis the mystery behind C. Kaya ang ginagawa natin, pag kinukuha natin yung error bound, kinukuha natin ano yung pinakamal pinakamalaking posibleng error para alam natin yung worst case scenario. Right? And that's why I ask you, or I am always asking you, to replace this value by the highest possible value of the n plus 1 derivative on the interval AB. Okay? So, hindi talaga natin kayang i-compute si C. Kasi kung alam na natin, kung, kung, kung may paraan, kung paano natin mahanap si C, eh di mahanap natin yung exactong function value ni f of x. Itatranspose ko lang tong p sub n, ipat ko lang yan, gagawin kong plus, makukuha natin yung exactong value ni f of x. So, there's no need for the interpolating polynomial. So, yun nga lang, hindi natin kayang hanapin si C. And there's a good reason for that, okay, or practical reason for that. So yeah, nakadepende siya dyan sa value, sa isang value ng n plus 1 derivative, okay. All over n plus 1 factorial, so meron siyang denominator na napakalaking number, especially if n is very large, times this uh, polynomial, which we called omega, right? So, so omega ay product ng x minus lahat ng mga interpolatory abscissas. So, on its own, ayan yung nagde-determine nung, or etong uh, mga ba, uh, etong entire term na yan, siya yung nagsasabi ano yung error dun sa interpolatory process, okay? And in any numerical analysis uh, discussion, ang lagi nating tanong, paano natin mapapababa yung error, right? That's always the, 
uh, one thing about uh, numerical analysis, hindi lang tayo nag-aaral ng methods. Pag-aaralan natin yung methods para sagutin o approximate ang solution sa isang particular problem. Gagawa tayo ng mga numerical techniques. Pero hindi natatapos doon yung boxing. So, sunod yan, hanapin natin ano yung error para alam natin gano'ng kaganda yung numerical solution na na-provide natin. Tapos, hindi pa rin tayo titigil doon. So, alam ko na yung error, paano ko mapapababa yung error to improve the overall approximation process. So, we will apply apply that to this uh, to the interpolatory process how can we improve the interpolatory um, inter uh, the interpolatory polynomial right so um, titingnan natin paano natin mapapababa yung error okay now dito uh, una wala na tayong pwedeng gawin dito all right sa factor na yan because that is fixed nag interpolate tayo ng isang function f. So yung n plus 1 derivative niya, hindi natin kayang mabago. Si c, napaka-mysterious niya. Wala tayong ibang alam sa kanya. So we cannot do anything with the factor highlighted in yellow. So wala tayong pwedeng gawin. Wala tayong magagawa sa kanya. Nandiyan na siya. Fixed siya. Whatever process we do. Right? So pababayaan na natin siya. The next thing is the denominator n plus 1 factorial. Right? So if you want to drive the value of the error down, what could I do with n? Ah, uh, nasabi niyo na to last time, ano? So yeah, Prince, that's right. Increasing value ni n because if n is larger, then the denominator will be much, much larger. Kasi nakafactor, ah, uh, sorry. Kasi nakafactorial pa siya, right? And among the schema of of uh, of orders of function, yung factorial siya yung pinakamabilis lumake, right? Sabihin nyo, sir, sige, palakihin natin yung n plus 1 factorial. Pag pinalaki natin yung n plus 1, hindi ba lalaki rin si omega? Well, si omega, posibleng lumaki. Pero ano yung rate of increase of omega? Remember, omega will just be a polynomial, right? So it will be a power x to the n plus 1. Eh, polynomial lang yan, powers lang siya. So ang powers, mas, mabil, mas mabagal siyang lumaki kesa sa factorial. So that could be a nice uh, that could be a nice trick, you know. Palakihin natin yung value ni n. Paglaki kasi ni n, lalaki yung denominator in a rate uh, following the rules of factorials, ano? Uh, tapos mas mabilis theoretically siyang uh, lumaki kaysa sa paglaki ng isang polynomial function x to the power n. So that could be one thing, ano? Palakihin natin yung value ni n. Pero ano yung consequences nun? Ano yung mga cons mula dun sa process na yon? Well, paglaki ng value ni n, paggrami ng abscissas na gagamitin. So the higher n plus 1 is, the higher, um, the, the, the more points you're using. Tapos mas magtatrabaho si MATLAB. Mas marami siyang computation sa kailangan gawin, di ba? Kasi sa bawat abscissa, meron tayong Lagrange basis polynomial. So pag pinarami niyo yung points na ginagamit, humahaba yung calculations, nagiging computationally expensive na yung process. Pero theoretically, dapat gumanda yung approximation. Pero in the next module, makikita natin may problema yung paglaki ng value ni n plus 1 aside from the computational expense. Meron tong mga computational uh, meron tong mga theoretical implications. For one, pag lumaki si n plus 1, lalaki rin yung degree ng polynomial natin, ng algebraic interpolating polynomial. Because if you're using, say, 100 um, uh, interpolatory abscissas, ibig sabihin, degree 99 yung polynomial nyo. And we will see in the next module na pag mataas yung degree ng polynomial, magkakaroon tayo ng problema. Right? And I think you have seen that uh, that uh, that phenomenon in laboratory exercise, which one was it? Uh, 1.1. Okay, nakita nyo na na, ah, hindi porkit pinalaki ko si N, gumaganda yung interpolation. Kasi ang laki ng polynomial, uh, ang laki ng degree ng polynomial na nakukuha natin. And I'll, I'll, uh, I'll uh, introduce you to that phenomenon in module number four. So let's put increasing the value of N plus one on the side, tingnan naman natin yung susunod. Ano pa yung pwede natin paglaruan? We can uh, we can play with the value uh, with omega, all right? So, paano natin ma, ma, ma modify ito? Well, aside from n, isa na lang naman yung set of parameters para kay omega. Si omega nakadepende siya dun sa mga x sub i's. Titingnan natin in module number 3, what is the nice way 
of choosing the x sub i's para mapababa etong value ni uh, ng error. All right? At ito dapat yung option uh, yung problem number 4 doon sa lab x or 1.2. May kita nyo na pag pinili nyo ng maayos yung mga x sub i's. Whenever you have the option, you know, then you can drive the error much la uh, much uh, much uh, you can drive it much down, all right? Mapapababa natin yung error, piliin lang natin ng maayos yung mga x sub i's. Of course, you cannot always do that kasi minsan halimbawa fix lang yung x sub i's dun sa problem. Halimbawa, nag-collect ka lang ng data, tapos uh, may access ka lang to certain x sub i's. Then you cannot apply the process that we can uh, that we will discuss in module number 3. Kasi rito ang assumption natin kaya nating pumili ng mga x sub i's. And this is one thing that we can do in the last example in module number 2, yung pag integrate natin ng e to the x squared. Tayo yung ah, meron tayong liberty to choose the x sub i's in that interpolatory process. Okay? And then we will consider and uh, kapag ka pwede nating piliin yung mga x sub i's, paano natin sila pipiliin? And in this module, we will talk about two ways of choosing the x sub i's and we will see that the choice of the x sub i's will uh, will depend kung ano yung measure of error na ginagamit natin. On to, uh, uh, so let's start with uh, section A. So section A, pipiliin natin yung x sub i's para mapababa yung L infinity norm ng ating error. Okay? Kasi paano natin minimeasure yung error, right? E mga, e yung ating error ay function ni x. So how do we measure or how do we uh, how do we measure the size of a function? Kasi kung i-measure natin ang size ng isang number, kukunin lang natin yung absolute value. Pero paano natin i-measure ang size ng isang function over an interval AP? So gumagamit tayo ng konsepto ng mga norms, okay? So yung norms, siya yung nagsasabi gaano kalaki ang isang function over a certain interval, okay? So these are measures of how big a function is on a certain interval. The first one that we'll use is the L infinity norm. Kung meron kang isang continuous function f on the closed interval AB, ang kanyang L infinity norm I define as follows. Ang notation na ito, so parang naka-fancy absolute value symbol lang pero dalawa kasi nga norm ito. Usually pag norm, dalawang bars yung nag enclose dun sa function f. And then to denote that we are measuring the L infinity norm, may subscription na infinity. So this is uh, this is read as the L infinity norm of f, right? Paano ko compute ng L infinity ni ang um, L infinity norm ni f? It is just the supremum of the absolute value of f of x over the interval a b. Ano yung least upper bound para kay f of x doon sa interval a b? Dun sa mga nag one five five. Uh, maalala nyo yung supremum, ano? or dapat naalala nyo yung supremum. But if you haven't taken 155, kaya sinabi ko rito, assume na lang natin na si f ay continuous. Kasi pag si f ay continuous, the supremum is also the same as the maximum ng absolute value ni f of x over the interval a, b. Okay? So, uh, kailangan nyo lang gawin kung continuous si function f, kunin nyo lang yung absolute uh, yung pinakamalaking absolute function value ni f doon sa buong interval a, b. And that is assigned to be the L infinity norm ni f. Okay? So, if you have the graph of f, makikita nyo kagad kung ano yung kanyang supremum. Alright? Or ano yung kanyang L infinity norm. For instance, I have here, okay? If this is a, this is b, and this is my function f of x. If you want to find the uh, the L infinity norm of f over the interval a, b, titingnan nyo yung graph, kukunin lang natin yung pinakamalaking absolute value. Right? So kukunin nyo lang either yung pinakamataas or yung pinakamababang point kasi sila yung candidates para sa L infinity norm. So dito, ito yung highest. Meron ka dyang L1, tapos meron ka ditong lowest. Siya si L2. Kunin mo yung absolute value ni L1 sa ni L2 kung sino yung mas mataas, siya yung L infinity norm. Again, siya yung pinakamalaking absolute value ni F doon sa interval AB. Okay? Is that good? Excuse me, guys. Give me one moment.
All right. So, yun yung pagkuha ng supermoon. Okay? So, in this sense, you can think of the L infinity norm as more of a more local measure of error. Bakit siya local? Kasi pinagtatabi-tabi lang natin yung mga function values point by point. Tapos kinukuha natin sinong function value ang may pinakamalaking absolute value. So basically, ang comparison natin nagiging point by point. All right. That's why I want, to, I, I want to say that this measure is much more local. Kasi point by point yung tingitingnan natin. Sino yung may pinakamalaking absolute value among the function values? That will be our L infinity norm. Okay? So the idea here is... Paano natin pipiliin yung mga exabytes para makuha natin yung pinakamaliit na L infinity norm nung ever doon sa interpolation. Okay? So if we go back to uh, the error term, okay? Ito yung error term natin sa sa interpolation. Gusto kong mapababa yung L infinity norm na to. Uh, delayed na naman yata yung aking uh, screen. Nag-shift na ba yung screen ko sa inyo? Okay, there we go. Ngayon lang siya umabot. Okay, so I hope you're seeing it now. Kukunin natin yung L infinity norm yan. Okay? Uh, pipili natin yung mga exabytes para mapababa yung L infinity norm nitong, uh, uh, nitong, uh, nitong error term. So paano natin pipilian yung mga exabytes para mapababa itong L infinity norm na yan? Well, yung L infinity norm ay pinakamalaking function value. So, ibig sabihin, uh, hindi magmamatter ito. Hindi rin magmamatter ito. So, pwede ko na siyang tanggalin sa norm. Kasi ang constants, lumalabas lang ng norm. Etong function value na to constant yan. Evaluated at C. Hindi nga lang natin alam yung value ni C, pero constant siya. So, lalabas yung numerator. Yung denominator ay fixed din. Constant Yan, kasi nasum natin dito, meron tayong fixed n plus 1 points. So basically, ang challenge lang ay paliitin yung L infinity norm ni omega by choosing the exabytes. So dun sa mga applied math dyan, ginagawa natin ay we are minimizing this uh, by choosing the exabytes. All right? So parang isa siyang optimization problem. Minimize natin to by choosing the, uh, the, the exabytes. Paano natin pipilian yung exabytes? Gagamit tayo ng tinatawag natin na Chebyshev uh, polynomials. Okay. And Chebyshev polynomials are defined in uh, definition 3.2. Okay. Anong sabi ng definition 3.2? Pag meron kang non-negative integer n, ang Chebyshev polynomial of degree n denoted by t sub n of x ay yung polynomial Now, domain niya ay the closed interval negative 1 to 1 and t sub n of x equals cosine ng n r cosine ni x. Medyo kakaiba itong mga polynomials na to. They are called polynomials, pero una, restricted yung domain nila. So, so yung mga Chebyshev polynomials, ang domain lang nila lagi ay negative 1 to 1. Tapos ang definition ng t sub n, which is the degree n Chebyshev polynomial, ay cosine ng n r cosine ni x. Right? Um, and then you just give a non-negative integer n, then you can enumerate the Chebyshev polynomials. Say when n is equal to 0, we'll have t sub 0 of x, that's cosine of what? Cosine of 0 times r cos of x. So this, just will, be, uh, this will just be cosine of 1. Uh, sorry, cosine of zero equal to one. So the degree zero uh, Chebyshev polynomial is the constant one. Now, if you want to get t sub one of x, this will be cosine ng one times r cos x. So r cos x lang again. But oops, cosine is followed by r cos. So this will just be x. So ito yung degree one Chebyshev polynomial. Tapos sabi niyo, sir, okay, pagpatuloy lang natin yan, sir. Kaya lang kapag kasi n ay equal kay 2 na, ang itsura na nung Chebyshev polynomial ay cosine ng 2r cosine x. Para naglolokohan tayo, sir. Hindi naman siya polynomial. Paano ko siya makikita na siya ay degree 2? Alright? Uh, but before we go there, eto pala kung bakit siya ang domain niya lang ay negative 1 to 1. Kasi si x ay nagiging input muna sa r cos ni x. 
And remember, ang R cosine, ang domain niya lang ay negative 1 to 1. That's why we cannot accept as input to the Chebyshev polynomial a number greater than 1 or less than negative 1 kasi dun muna siya papasok sa R cosine and defined yung R cosine outside the interval negative 1 to 1. Kaya restricted yung domain ng Chebyshev polynomials from negative 1 to 1. Tapos, pangalawang bagay, sir, naglolokohan tayo, mukhang hindi na siya polynomial kapag kasi n ay mas malaki na. For instance, if n is equal to 10, this will be cosine of 10 or cosine of x. How, the, uh, how is it a polynomial? Well, we'll just need to recall trigonometric identities para mapakita na siya talaga isang polynomial, at least defined from negative 1 to 1. So una, expand yung muna yung t sub n plus 1. So basically, yung n dun sa formula ng Chebyshev, papalitan ko lang ng n plus 1. I'll get this, right? Tapos, pwede kong um, i-expand yung nasa loob ni cosine, magiging ganito. Tapos may plus sa loob ng cosine, alam niyo na yung gagawin. Magkakos-kosin-sin na kayo. Or uh, the identity for the sum or, or for, the ang, uh, for, the, for the cosine of a sum, all right? Pag in-expand yan, using your trig identities, you'll get this. Okay? So hopefully, tandaan niyo pa yung trig identities. Parang wala na kayong mat 17, ano? So mula sa senior high, dapat na encounter niyo itong uh, uh, trigonometric identity na yan. Alright? Then we'll do the same thing for t sub n minus 1. So magkakaroon naman tayo ng cosine ng n minus 1 times theta. That will be cosine ng n theta minus 1. Alright? Tapos, trig identity uli. Ito naman yung makukuha natin. And then what I'll do is I'll add t sub n plus 1 and t sub n minus 1. So that means this guy plus this guy. And their sum will be 2 cosine n theta cosine theta. Oh, by the way, I forgot uh, to mention that I replaced r cosine x muna by theta. Sorry, naging excited. Nakalimutan ko yung letting statement na yun. Para mas madali yung manipulation. All right? So we are now right here. Tapos ibabalik ko ngayon yung uh, substitution. Remember, si theta ay r cosine ni x. So kung si theta ay r cosine ni x, so ito magiging cosine ng r cosine of x, that will just be equal to x. So basically, this guy will be 2x cosine of n theta. But who is cosine n theta? Well, well, cosine n theta is exactly the Chebyshev polynomial of degree n. So that guy will be replaced by t sub n of x. And here we go. All right? So this is uh, t sub n plus 1 plus t sub n minus 1 equals 2x t sub n of x. And then we can isolate t sub n plus 1 to the left side and we'll get this recursion formula. Okay? So para makuha pala yung degree n plus 1 Chebyshev polynomial, kailangan ko lang gawin yung 2x times the degree n Chebyshev polynomial minus the degree n minus 1 Chebyshev polynomial. Kaya ang kaya ang tawag sa kanya recursion formula. Kasi kailangan mo yung previous two values para makompute yung susunod na Chebyshev polynomial. And we'll just use this formula. Well, let's, let's illustrate that. Okay, so alam na natin si t0 of x, the degree 0 Chebyshev polynomial is 1, the linear Chebyshev polynomial is x. So if you want to find t sub 2 or the quadratic Chebyshev polynomial, kailangan ko lang gawin yung 2x times the previous Chebyshev polynomial. So kailangan ko yung t sub n. So dito ang n natin ay, uh, ang n natin ay what? Ang n natin ay 1 kasi gusto ko si t2. So si 2 siya dapat si n plus 1. So equal siya sa 2x times the previous Chebyshev polynomial, which is x, minus the Chebyshev polynomials two steps ago. So this will just be minus 1. All right? Again, we're looking for t2. So it's going to be 2x times t1 minus t0. So our degree 2 Chebyshev polynomial is 2x squared minus 1. Okay? Then the cubic Chebyshev polynomial, t3 of x is just 2x times the previous Chebyshev polynomial. So 2x squared minus 1. 
minus the Chebyshev polynomial uh, two steps back. So this would be minus x. Okay. And then you can just simplify it and then you'll get t3. All right. Now, kung gusto nyo mag, uh, mag practice mamaya ng pagsasheb-sheb, you can find t4, t5, and so on, and check your answer with what I have here in table 3.1. So, yan yung uh, unang uh, ilan? Unang pitong shebisheb polynomial or unang walong shebisheb polynomial. And indeed, they look like polynomial now, nung ginamit natin yung recursion formula. All right. And what can we notice about them as well? Um, oh, but just remember that uh, ang, ang kanilang degree, uh, sorry, ang kanilang domain ay from negative one to one lama. Okay? Everything's good so far? So, tinuro ko kung ano yung Shebyshev polynomial, pero hindi ko pa sinasabi kung paano natin magagamit ito para mapababa yung L infinity norm noong error term, right? Yun yung end goal natin. So, Paano pumapasok yung Chebyshev polynomials into play when we are driving the value of the error down? Well, may mga magandang property itong Chebyshev polynomials. So kahit applied yung problem natin, parang napaka-applied niya na paghahanap ng algebraic interpolating polynomial. Pero para pala mapababa yung error ng algebraic interpolating polynomial, kailang, pwede akong gumamit ng Chebyshev polynomial. Tapos dito napapasok yung theory. Anong meron? sa mga Chebyshev polynomials na sila yung makakapagpababa ng L infinity norm ng error. Okay? Tingnan natin yung uh, yung for uh, yung mga properties or ilan sa mga properties ng Chebyshev polynomials ay nasa remark 3.1. Okay? Una, ang T sub n ay so si T sub n ay degree n. Right? So pwede niyo siyang ma-prove by uh, uh, by PMI, right? Si T0 ay degree 0. Si T1 ay degree 1. Okay? Tapos pwede ka na mag-PMI doon. Si T2, uh, anong degree ni T2? Si T2 ay 2x times degree 1. So this would be a degree 2 term minus a degree 1. So si, uh, si T2 ay talagang degree 2. Right? And then you can do the recursion again. Kasi kung si Tn ay degree n, multiply siya ng 2x. So this term will be degree uh, n plus 1. So n plus 1 in degree niya. Minus a degree n minus 1 polynomial. Their sum will be a degree n plus 1 polynomial. So on degree ni t sub n plus 1, i n plus 1. So by PMI, true. Uh, t sub n is of degree n. Tapos second property, si Chebyshev polynomial ay hindi na monic kapag kasi n ay greater than 1. Have you guys heard of the term monic? Kailan ng isang polynomial ay monic? Or hindi, bago yung term na monic. Pag usapang polynomials, ang isang polynomial ay monic kapag ka ang leading coefficient niya ay 1. So kung siya ay degree n, dapat ang coefficient ni x to the power n ay equal kay 1. Pag nangyari yun, ang tawag natin sa kanya ay monic. So ang sinasabi ng remark 3.1.2, kapag ka ang degree ng ating Chebyshev polynomial ay mas malaki na sa 1, hindi na siya monic. Okay? So tingnan natin, first few examples. So si T0 ay equal K1. Yeah, well, it's a monic polynomial of degree 0 kasi ang coefficient ni x to the 0 ay 1. Si T1 ay equal kay x, it's still monic. Kasi ang coefficient ni x to the 1 ay equal kay 1. Pero si T2, hindi na siya monic kasi ito ay 2x squared minus 1. Ang leading coefficient ni x squared ay 2. So, hindi na monic. All right? So, yun yung pagiging monic ng isang polynomial. Well, and it's easy to prove that T sub n will not be monic when n is greater than 1. Kasi anong nangyayari? Bakit kaya hindi na monic? kapag ka mas malaki na kay 1 yung degree. Anyone? Or convinced ba kayo at least dun sa pattern na hindi siya magiging monic? Bakit sure tayo or madaling makita na hindi na siya monic? Okay. 
Okay, sabi ni Kiefer, kasi po pag bonic hanggang degree of one lang, uh, I'm thinking you you meant na ang coefficient nung x to the degree ay hindi na one. Yeah, that's right. Pero I like the explanation of Nicolate better. Um, and then Ray, and then Chris Sell, and Dino. Yeah, tama. Kasi paano na define yung monic, uh, yung, yung Shebyshev polynomial? Okay, thank you guys. Bumabaha yung chat message. So, eto. Kasi di ba, na multiply ng 2x yung previous uh, Shebyshev polynomial. Alright? So, ibig sabihin, lumalaki ng lumalaki by a factor of 2 yung leading coefficient, right? Kasi yung t3 natin of x maging ano to. So, eto, multiply ng 2x, so magkakaroon tayo ng 4x cubed plus some more terms, right? So, 4 na, yung uh, leading coefficient, hindi niya siya monic. So, pag nagpunta tayo sa t4, o sa t4, 2x times t3, so magkakaroon tayo ng leading coefficient na 8. Then, leading coefficient na 16, leading coefficient na 32, hindi na siya bumabalik sa 1. So, never na magiging monic ang Chebyshev polynomial of degree greater than 1. And which brings us to remark number 3. Ang sinasabi naman ito, ang leading coefficient lagi ng Chebyshev polynomial ay 2 to the power n minus 1. Okay? 2 to the power n minus 1. Here, uh, well, kapag kasi n ay greater than 0. So, ito ay leading coefficient, 2 to the 1 minus 1, 2 to the 0, that's 1, kaya siya monic. Si T2, so ang n dito ay 2, ang leading coefficient niya ay 2 to the power 2 minus 1, so that's gonna be 2. Yes, there we go. All right. So, ano napapansin na natin na pattern? Yung leading coefficient niya ay 2 to the power of the degree minus 1. All right. So, si degree 3 to. So, ang leading coefficient niya dapat 2 to the 3 minus 1, that's 2 squared, that's 4. At madali siya makita using the recursion formula kasi lagi lang tayo nag, nagmumultiply ng 2x pa ulit-ulit. Oh, sorry, Mitzi, I just saw your chat. Pag monic, ang coefficient niya dapat ay 1. Ang leading coefficient ay 1. Oh yeah, thank you, Nicolate, for answering that question. Okay? Uh, so, for instance, ito ay monic kasi ang leading coefficient ay 1. Si x ay monic kasi ang leading coefficient ay 1. Si 2x squared minus 1 ay hindi monic kasi ang leading coefficient niya ay 2. Pag leading coefficient siya yung coefficient ng highest power. Right? So siya ay 2. Alright? Okay? And then some more properties. Uh, I think number 4 is easily uh, seen kapag uh, tinignan mo yung cosine definition. Okay? Uh, ang ating Chebyshev polynomial ay even kapag ka ang kanyang degree ay even, siya ay odd kapag ka ang degree niya ay odd. And then, madaling hanapan ng zeros ang Chebyshev polynomial. Kasi, di ba, ang Chebyshev polynomial, aside from the recursion formula, ito lang yung kanyang another definition. Right? By cosine ng n or cosine ng x. All right? So, pag gusto nating mahanap, ano yung roots ng Chebyshev polynomial, I-equate ko lang yung t and k0, mas madali itong sagutan using the trigonometric definition. At yan na naman po, delayed na naman yung screen ko. Alright, so antayin natin siya mag-load para mas madaling pag-usapan, right? Kasi si number 5, it's talking, uh, it is talking about the roots of the Chebyshev polynomial. Of course, pwede mong tingnan yung mga polynomials, equate siya kay 0, pero mahirap kuna ng roots ang isang polynomial. Lalo na kung mataas yung degree. Now, pero dahil Chebyshev sila, mas madaling gamitin yung alternative definition o yung unang definition ng Chebyshev na siya ay naka-cosine. So we'll be solving for this equation, cosine ng n r cosine x equals 0. Madali siyang isolve. Bakit madaling isolve? Kasi kailan ba nagzi-zero ang cosine? So sige, review na yung trick. Kailan nagzi-zero ang cosine? Ano dapat yung nasa loob ng cosine para mag-zero? Uh, cosine, cosine. Yes, uh, thank you, Elgin, Giancarlo, Kiefer, and Nicolate. Yes, kapag ka, nag, kapag ka multiple ni pi over 2 yung nasa loob ni cosine. All right? So that means, n r cosine of x 
should either be plus or minus pi over 2. All right. So, yan yung magiging solution. Ah, uh, yung, yung cosine nagiging 0 kapag kang angle na nasa loob ni cosine ay plus or minus pi over 2. Of course, kasama pa yung mga uh, after one revolution, pwede ka pa rito mag-add ng multiples ni 2 pi, pero kunin lang natin yung kanyang fundamental solution. All right. Tapos here, I can divide both sides by n. So we'll have r cosine ng x equals plus or minus n pi over 2. Okay. Tapos, ang susun uh, actually may 2. Sige, kailangan ko palang isama yung 2 pi. So plus 2 pi, plus 2 pi. Tapos kukunin ko yung cosine ng both sides, all right? Para mahanap si x kasi meron tayong r cosine of x equals this guy, 2 pi plus or minus n pi over 2, right? Kukunin ko yung cosine ng both sides. I'll get x equals cosine ng 2 pi plus or minus n pi over 2. Ah, sorry. Masyado pang maaga para mag -do, na do the math. Pero yung n dapat nasa denominator siya. Sorry about that. Okay. Over 2n. Nasa denominator nga pala siya dapat. So, may kakaroon ako dito ng 2n. Wala na yung n dito. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Bakit may mali pa? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ayan, ang dami kong kulang kasi, uh, sorry, nasa isip ko kasi ay isolve yung fundamental solution. Kailangan ko pala lahat ng solution sa so dapat meron ako ditong integer na j. Oops, sorry. Uh, right? Kasi pwede ako mag-add ng multiples ni 2 pi para paulit-ulit akong nandun sa pi over 2, right? So ito ay naka-plus 2, 2j pi. Tapos ito ay magkakaroon ng j. Tapos kukunin ko lang yung negative roots. Aha, aha. Mag-zero siya dun sa dalawa na yon Tapos kinonsider ko lang yung kalahate. Okay, tapos 2 and pi, negative 1 to 1. Okay. Paano ko matatanggal yung plus or minus? Kasi sabi dito sa theorem, 2j minus 1 over 2n times pi lang. Andito na ako. Bakit natanggal yung... Bakit natanggal yung positive root? Kasi minus lang yung nakalagay. Gusto ko kasi ay simple roots. Mm -hmm. Any ideas? Bakit na matanggal yung plus? Kasi sabi dito, 2j minus 1 over 2n times pi. Eto na yung meron tayo. Hopefully tama na yung algebra ko dito. Ang pinagkaiba lang nila ay nawala na yung positive. Bakit nawala yung positive? Mm -hmm. Aha, aha. Right, but nung bakit mawawala yung positive? Mm -hmm. Pag negative pi, tama pa naman, magsizero yung r cos, bakit siya magninig? Bakit mawawala yung positive root? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, help me with this one, guys. Bakit mawawala yung positive? Nakalimutan ko mong bakit mawawala yung positive. Lalampas ba yun ang 1? Kasi same lang po ang cosine negative pi sa cosine pi. Oh, I think you have a point there, Nicolette. Uh, kasi mangyari ay... 
magkakaroon tayo na, okay, hold on. Uh, hmm. Parang sa cosine ng negative pi sa cosine plus pi. Mm -hmm. Ah, pag mag-add pa ako ng pi over 2n, kaya lang meron akong over 2n. So, mawawala na yung dependence niya sa cosine pi. Mag-repeat ba yun? Parehas lang yung value nila. Yung cosine ng 2, uh, uh, siguro ito yung sinasabi ni Nicolette, uh, yung cosine ng 2j plus 1 over 2n pi. Tama ba to? Equal lang sila, 2j Equal ba yung dalawa na yan? Kasi kung equal sila, then okay. Uh, nasagot na yung question ko. Pero equal ba sila? 2J minus 1. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, ang gusto ko na lang, Ned, ay masabi kung Ah, uh, makita bakit hindi kinonsider yung plus. Kasi sabi dun sa theorem, ang xj ay equal sa cosine ng 2j minus 1 over 2n times pi. Dun sa derivation ko, nakuha kong cosine, ah, uh, nakuha kong root sa cosine ng 2j plus or minus 1 over 2n times pi. So ito yung tanong ko ngayon. Bakit ay equal pa tong dalawa? Parang hindi siya laging equal, no? Kasi hindi lang sila negative of each other. Hmm. Bakit nga ba? Uh, or may nakakalimutan ako importante yung bagay. Uh, ha. Okay, let me think about it uh, muna. Uh, sige, pag-isipan natin kung bakit nawala yung uh, kung bakit nawala yung kabilang roots. Uh, pero tama, no? Kasi kapag ka uh, Mag-zero siya kapag ka ito ay, kapag ka yung nr cosine of x ay plus or minus pi over 2. Tapos mag a ako ng 2 pi. So, kailangan ko siyang i-consider talaga. Pero bakit nawawala yung kalahate? Yeah, uh, let me think about that. Meron ako nakakalimutang uh, import, uh, basic na property ng trigonometric uh, uh, ng, ng cosine function. So, let me think about that. And uh, sige, pag-isipan din natin. Uh, sabi ni Ned, uh, j equals 1, 2, 3. Uh, ha. Yeah, gusto niya ay j ay sumula kay 1. Kapag kasi j ay nag-0, cosine ng negative pi. Aha, aha. Uh, Alisa, dun pa tayo sa roots muna. <laughs> Hindi pa dun sa maximum and minimum. Uh, uh, yeah. Bakit dalawa yung nakukuha ko? Meron na nakakalimutang basic. Ano? So, balikan ko kayo sa, sa, Thursday, uh, sa Friday. Kung ano yung basic na nakalimutan ko. Alright? So, yun yung pagkuha ng roots. Ang point ko lang dito ay, mas madaling gamitin yung trigonometric definition ng Chebyshev para makuha yung roots niya. And the roots actually will play an important part doon sa pagkuha natin ng inter pagkuha natin ng interpolatory abscissas, okay? So balikan natin yun. And that's part of the theorem, and we'll stop here. Ano? Ah, uh, so hindi ko matatapos si module three this week, pero that's fine. We have a buffer week. Ano? Ah, uh, the last uh, theorem or the last part of the remark is that ang maximum at sa ka minimum value ng Chebyshev polynomial ay laging plus or minus one. Bakit laging, uh, bakit ang maximum ng uh, maximum at minimum ng Chebyshev polynomial ay plus or minus 1? Kasi nga, di ba, ang T sub N of X ay cosine lamang ng N R cosine ng X. Alright? So kahit ano pa mangyari, ang isang Chebyshev polynomial ay isang cosine. And the value of the cosine can go as high as positive 1 at can go down by negative 1. 
So kaya alam na natin, unang tingin pa lang kay T sub n na ang maximum niya ay 1, tapos ang minimum niya ay negative 1. Kasi nga, isa siyang cosine. Alright? And then remember, Chebyshev polynomial ay, uh, polynomials are defined only from negative 1 to 1. So kaya uh, kahit na itsura siyang polynomials, ang pwede lang nating i-plug in dito sa definition ng Chebyshev ay mga x's from negative 1 to 1. And for x's between negative 1 to 1, ang maximum value ng mga to ay laging 1 and negative 1 lamang. Of course, exemption si t sub 0, which is a constant equal to 1. Okay. At paano mahanap kung kailan na kukuha yung uh, maximum at minimum ng Chebyshev polynomial, equate lang natin yung kanyang trigonometric, uh, trigonometric version k plus or minus 1. Tatanungin natin kailan to nagiging positive 1 at kailan to nagiging negative 1. Okay. So ang cosine, hold on. Aha, aha. Ah, yeah. So ito, ang cosine ay nagiging positive 1 kapag ka yung angle, right? ang angle natin dito ay r cosine ng x ay nagiging equal kanina. Nag-zero ang cosine kapag ka siya ay ah, naging equal ang cosine kapag ka ikaw ay naka ay zero at saka kay pi. So, ibig sabihin ito ay n pi for n is an integer. Right? So, uh, totoo ito lagi. Tapos, di-divide mo lang both sides by n. So, magiging r cosine ng x ay equal kay pi. Tapos kailan ang r cos? Ha? Ano nangyari? So, di-divide ko by n. Naging n pi. Ah, sorry. Parehas yung variable na ginamit ko. Dapat ito ay j. Kasi si j ay integer. So, ito ay magiging uh, r cosine ng x ay equal kay j pi over n. Kukunin ko yung cosine ng both sides magkakaroon ako ng x equals cosine ng j pi over n. Tapos restricted na siya from 0 to n kasi bakit? Bakit siya restricted? Bakit hanggang kay n na lang? Uh, ha. Bakit restricted tayo j going from 1 to n? E dito, di ba si j ay pwedeng maging integer, kahit anong integer. Kasi yung angle ay magiging equal kay... Yung angle ay magiging equal kay j pi, si j ay kahit na anong integer. Bakit? ni restrict ko ngayon si j from 0 to n. Hindi ko kasi to usually pinaprove sa klase. <laughs> ngayon ko lang naisip. Counterclockwise yung movement ng angles. Aha. Uh -huh. Pero algebraically, hindi ko naman kinonsider yung, yung rotation ng angles. Or is it just a choice? Hindi ko malala kung arbitrary choice lang to ng restriction. Or what? Uh, sabi ni Chrisel, dahil ang domain niya ay negative 1 to 1. Pero uh, let's see. Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. Oh yeah, may point si Chrisel. Thank you, Chrisel. Yeah. Uh, tama. Uh, kailangan dapat uh, si J ay from 0 to N lamang. Kasi, yeah. Thank you, Chrisel. That's right. Kasi diba dito, makukuha ko rito ay R cosine ng X ay equal kay J pi all over N. Pero before I take the cosine of both sides, we need to take note na R cosine of x dapat si j pi over n. 
So, ibig sabihin, dapat itong j pi over n ay hindi lalampas ng 1. Kasi pag lumampas yung value niya ng 1 o lumampas ng negative 1, hindi na siya pwedeng maging solution ng equation. Kasi r cosine nga siya, ang range ng r cos ay from negative 1 to 1 lamang. So, so kapag ka si j ay naging n plus 1, ibig sabihin lampas na tayo dun sa, ah, ito ay magiging greater than 1, hindi na siya pwedeng maging r cosine ni x. Right? Kasi dapat si, uh, si r cosine ay lagi lang from negative 1. Ah, sorry, hindi negative 1 to 1. Laging between negative pi over 2. Uh, hold on. R cosine ng x. R cosine ng x. Ito yung angle. Ah, so restricted to from 0 to 2 pi. Ah, sorry, 0 to pi. Ang range kasi ng r cosine ay from 0 to pi. Maybe I'll explain it more on uh, on Friday. Pero... Oh, kasi time na. Pero yun yung idea. Kasi ang r cosine ng x dapat ay nasa interval 0 to pi lamang. Okay. So kapag ka si j ay lumampas na ng kapag ka si j ay lumampas na ng n plus 1, nasa labas na tayo ng interval 0 to pi. Kasi uh, ano to? Uh, r cosine function. Restricted siya from 0 to pi. And probably along those lines then kung yung sagot dun sa question ko kanina. Kung bakit na restrict tayo na, na maging equal dito yung ating angle kasi nga dapat magkakaroon tayo dito ng x ah magkakaroon ako ng arc cosine ng x ay equal kay 2j plus or minus 1 over 2n times pi, all right? Pero dapat ito ay element ng 0 to pi. Yeah, thank you, Kurset. Nasagot na yung question ko. Wala na akong homework for Friday. All right? Kasi ito yun. Kasi nga yung r cosine ay restricted from 0 to, two pi, uh, 0 to pi. Yun yung restricted range ng r cosine. So dapat ang sagot dito sa equation na to ay isang angle from 0 to pi. Kapag ka ginamit ko yung 2j plus 1, tapos si j ranging from 1 to n lamang, lalampas na ako ng 0 to pi. Alright? So, ito yung nakalimutan kong basic property ng inverse trig. Ng r cosine ay restricted from 0 to pi. Okay? So, on uh, on Friday, we'll finally look at bakit natin gusto ang Chebyshev polynomials. Okay? So, uh, yeah, maybe I'll just start there on Friday. Okay? So, any questions? Alam ko matatapos ko ngayon yung buong section A. Nasta kasi ako dun sa proof. Dapat pala hindi ko na pinruba, no? Para, na, para natapos, ko yung, uh, natapos ko yung section. Ah, hindi pa pala kasi after nating ma-define yung ano, ma-prove yung pinakagusto kong property ng Shebyshev in relation to minimizing the L-infinity norm. Papakita ko pa yung MATLAB implementation niya. So, yeah, uh, talagang magtatagal tayo, right? So probably uh, section A lang yung matatapos natin on Friday. So ang exercise niyo on Monday will be about uh, the use of Chebyshev polynomials in interpolation. Okay? So if there are no questions, sorry, sakto-sakto na naman ako nagpa-dismiss. So um, thank you for coming today, guys. Enjoy the rest of the day. Tapos kita-kita ulit tayo on Friday. Bye, everyone. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, sir.